Hello, this is HSC Physics. I'm looking at ideas to implementation module out of space, motors and generators, quantum quark. Ideas to, we'll be looking at the syllabus in general, looking at the references and looking at the thorny issue of band gaps and band diagrams. They're very simple, as presented by the HSC, but their interpretation really can be greatly enhanced by a deeper insight. We're going over here to the third module showing that there are three sections to it. The bold, darker outline, the first column which is things you have to know, the third column it is things you have to do. Looking at the references here, there's a list of references seen on the Prezi. HSC Online is a very good general reference to make sure that you click through all the dot points. Uh, in it, you'll have the cores, um, which is space motor generators, ideas for implementation. We'll be doing quantum to quark. If you look at ideas for implementation, we'll scan through this until we get to the band diagrams. And they've got the general lies, the band diagrams that you have to have uh, as you work, work through this. Uh, again, this is showing that it's mapping the syllabus in their, their website. It'll show the general band diagrams. The vertical axis in the band diagrams, uh, when we get to it, will be energy. The horizontal axis is a bit more problematic. problematic. In HSC, you're led to just understand that it's x in physics, and to get deeper understanding, you know it is momentum. And there is a method of merging the two together. Here's the picture of the band diagrams. The left is conductor. The filled bands together. At right is insulator. Uh, there's no problem uh, in that. It's a large forbidden energy band. And we're going to look at the origin of the energy bands. The middle is a semiconductor, it's a small band, and temperature can excite. To the left here, or this overall diagram shows a simple band diagram. The vertical, the upper one is a 3D version, which physicists use to see how devices work. You collapse that, which is a thin set of overlapping parabolas and connect it together uh, on to form a montage of band diagrams which move across your device and on the extreme right we have a diode. Like getting up and looking up here we've got the potential energy diagram which we'll look at in greater detail. It then uh, has a band gap introduced to it due to the crystal function. It gets restitched together to form familiar humps, but it really it's impossible to interpret those humps just from a diagram because you've got the maxima is in the center. Then it goes up to the, uh, up to the right, uh, which is a proper physics phase space diagram with energy, momentum, quantum number, and uh, that is converted again and used in HSC in a more complex physics diagram. You will have a lab view diagram which simulates it. We have energy on the vertical axis and momentum on the horizontal axis. Zero momentum and obviously zero energy at the very bottom. Yellow circles there indicate that the very bottom electron orbitals or positions are filled. A quirk of quantum mechanics is you cannot put two electrons in the same um, orbital position, similar to atoms. And so as you add more and more electrons, each new electron is forced to adopt a lowest energy, but that lowest energy is a quite a high energy. It's got a parabola uh, associated with momentum. Momentum is associated with velocity, half mv squared. So the v squared is your parabola. Here I'm introducing a bit of temperature. Um, and temperature is a sound or vibration wave in your lattice, and the lattice acts similar to a, a hand wave in a basin or a bathtub where you're creating wave. It, it shoes the electrons up into a higher electric state. Mysteriously, the, um, we have a gap in not momentum space but in energy space. This is where the uh, lattice frequency equals the electron wave frequency, and when electrons have the same frequency, spatial frequency as the lattice, um, they've got a very good energy, or additional energy, um, and so the overall energy drops, and you get 
recreation of what we can see here from the side is a band gap. This is a side view, quickly a very side view there, um, where you saw the number, but you see the band gap here is a metal. The electrons are not stopped uh, moving; they're free to go to a higher state. And actual conduction is moving from one side of the band to the other in this view. So if you move to the right, the they're going, getting more of a right-hand momentum. Here the temperature is increasing. Uh, so the, not all electrons, temperature is an average effect. And so you have some electrons of very high energy. Here we've got a semiconductor. The bottom band is fully closed and uh, you have the occasional electron at uh, high energy where the uh, Thermal energy is just random enough for a few to pick them up to the conduction band, which is the upper band shown here. So we've got uh, balance band at the bottom, band gap, and uh, uh, correction balance at the bottom, uh, energy gap, and conduction band. Here I've got classic uh, computer lag, and so I'm trying to move it into position that's just playing up a bit. So you can see the old electron pushing up there. Uh, with temperature, so that is a um, intrinsic, a natural, an extrinsic one is what we're going to have in, in a short while here, uh, where I engineer. And unfortunately, in this simulation, you can't see it. An invisible layer just above the balance band of receptors. Uh, that's by adding uh, electrons uh, with a few less, um, sorry, uh, atoms. With less type three or group three the boron or aluminium. Here I've just really ramped up the temperature to get over this band gap. Uh, temperature down, and now I'm going to um, uh, introduce a layer, a extra uh, energy level just above the top of the balance band, and this will allow. Um, Electrons to go up to it and creating holes. And you can see holes are created there. So that's now a conductor again. So a semiconductor it is it can be an insulator or a conductor, and, and you can make it by adding um, electron poor materials to create p-type in the balance band. Or in this case, I've added an acceptor layer, a correction, a donor layer, just beneath the conduction band, and that's throwing electrons up. Both of these are. Are, uh, conductors, but however, if you stick the two types of materials together, they cancel out in the region that they're joined and creating an area which is again an insulator. So you get a P conductor, insulator, and conductor, uh, or semiconductor as it's saying. So we've seen here, we're just going to go back just in case you haven't missed it. This is your view, but it's an artificial view because um, we've just cut and spliced over. Here I'm moving the conduction band to the left and right with momentum. So if the momentum doesn't match up, you have what is called an indirect band gap. So from the side it looks exactly the same. That's the classic side, but from our special view, that's the classic side, it looks the same. But from the uh, momentum energy view, uh, you can see that we've got a bit of a problem here. And I want you to imagine this as sort of a, a roof gutter. So um, uh, what happens here is that uh, electrons go up, uh, hit the gutter uh, of the balance of the conduction band, and go down around the circuit. Here I'm showing it uh, unstitched again uh, in the unstitched picture, showing that. Um, have to go up. I've removed the energy band, the energy gap, I removed the crystal structure, and we'll go on to looking at devices shortly after this. This is a classic textbook picture of what we've seen. It's quite, I suppose, involved and complicated, but you can now see that those things that you see are sight on views of parabolas. The left we have metals, and they've talked as overlapping. It's a way of telling you that the conduction and balance bands overlap. Uh, 
we then have semiconductors uh, in the middle and insulators on the outside, balance at the bottom, conductor at the top. Um, and now we have a, uh, a doped device built here that we have on the left uh, P type. P has is aluminium type 3, too few electrons. Uh, on the right is N, too many electrons. In the centre, they overlap. A depletion region uh, is an amazing region because it can grow and sh or shrink depending on the field. Uh, if you push electrons into their region, uh, say from the uh, N side, you can actually shrink